via the topo map do you continue do you think it might just flow more northeast well certainly in the near future i think it's going to flow northeast along the line that it's going um but there are a lot of lava tubes there uh, that go different directions the cracks in this area as i showed in the map all go pretty much in the same direction um, lava tubes, uh, lava obviously can flow into lava tubes, but almost always the lava tubes are narrow enough that uh, the lava flowing in the tube will spend so much energy cooling or heating the edges that it will just freeze up and plug itself. Um, over the last, uh, I don't know, a couple hundred years or so, when we look at uh, you know eruptions and lava flows that have flowed over the, the Mauna Loa, Kilauea, I can think of maybe two or three instances where lava went through a pre-existing lava tube, and even then when it went through, it only went through half a mile or so before it popped out again. Okay, so north... Just to review, I said it was going in this direction. Right. But it is going to go to Kahoe Homestead. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> All right. Do you have any projection of where so, directions? Do you have any idea of the pathology? Yeah. When I was talking about this area, you remember I was saying it's very faulted, and so it's difficult for the lava to go many other directions right now besides just in this direction. But because it's so faulted and it's so irregular, it's going to be very difficult to actually predict where it's going to go until it gets out of this area. <clears throat> How long is it going to take for you folks to let people evacuate? And is there a certain amount of time that they're going to need to be able to complete the evacuation process? Is it hours? Is it days? It will be definitely no less than days. As soon as we, again, the purpose of these meetings is to talk about it so people can think about what they'll need to do based on where you live, what roads may be affected, because we just don't know where it could move towards and what roads could be affected. We're also looking at alternate routes so that if it does cross the highway, where we can help people to move. But we definitely are going to be staying in very close contact with Dr. Jim, maintaining at least daily flights over the area so we maintain that visual awareness of what's happening. And like I said, no less than days notice if there's going to be any evacuation. And we'd work with you in the community to make sure that it's done safely and easily for you. Can't wait till the last minute. Correct. Can't. You gotta open up Beach Road. You, you just answered my question about the evacuation. I was concerned about if it decides to jump over 130. So you are considering how we're going to get out without machetes and hiking boots. Yes, ma'am. We actually have took in the engineers or took the engineers over the roads, the, as examples, Railroad Avenue, Beach Road, already identifying what resources are going to be needed, starting to put those plans in action so we can get those roads open if it becomes a problem. Sure. In talking to our public works engineers as we flew over some of these roads, depending on what sections would need to be open first and how far, we're talking anywhere from one to two weeks, two to three weeks, just depending on the distance. But so far, all of the discussions I've had with them with the roads that I mentioned, we're talking just a matter of weeks, and that's where I want to give them as much time as possible as well. So we're looking at right now, it's not posing an imminent threat, but we're already planning for that potential so that they can be ready and open up those roads. And the unfortunate thing is, if it should continue to move, again, hopefully it doesn't, and we're, I'm trying to stay as optimistic as I can, it could actually go all the way down to the ocean as well. So just because we may open up roads in sequence, it might eventually get its way to the ocean. Okay. That goes uh, past the cinder cone and through uh, Hawaiian beaches? Yes, we actually looked at the Wawa Road, and that would need some improvements as well, from Kapoho all the way through to Hawaiian Beaches, and we have been looking at Railroad Avenue as well. Okay, because I live on that road, I was just curious. Also, my comment is, I think Kelly is coming to take Wau Kele Okuna because of the land swap. That's my comment. <laughs> to the right, it slopes that way, and to the left, it slopes toward Kawapana way, but that's the highest point, isn't that in Wild Kelly? Would that make a difference on the direction of the flow? Or in line of that, that, that it, Certainly, but it's not a very high point. It, uh, the pad itself seems to be uh, filled, rated. Um, and then there are uh, these this broken terrain on either side of it. 
So even if, uh, even if the pad itself were high enough to say push the flow one way or the other locally around the pad, it's still gonna have to deal with that broken terrain on either side. And so it's, it's gonna be very difficult. It's gonna be, it's not, well, difficult is probably the wrong word, but it's gonna be complicated for the flow to go any other direction but along the, the grain of this, uh, this terrain. But it's possible. As I said, the cracks are not continuous, the blocks are not continuous, and it's possible that it could get into one of these lower spots and fill that up and get over it and get off onto one side or the other, the north or the south side. That's why you know, we, we are not really projecting where this is going to go other than within the rift zone itself right at the moment until it does something else. Living in Leilani Estates in Upper Leilani, would you be thinking about moving your family out at this point? <laughs> that's, a, that's an unfair question. You know, I think Leilani Estates is a very beautiful place. <laughs> but it is within uh, Hazard Zone 1, which kind of means it's, um, it has different risks than other areas. I've always liked Leilani Estates. But. <laughs> Relocate your family? Yeah, I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I have a question about a route that I don't actually know if it exists, but I'm in Black Sand subdivision and we have Upper Puna Road that runs above our subdivision. And someone told me a long time ago that at the end of the road there, there used to be a place where you could go up through um, roughed in subdivisions to make it all the way to Upper Puna. Is that a possible route that's being considered that would not be therefore subject to subsequent flows to the ocean? I'm not aware of that route, but I'll definitely ask maybe Public Works and also look on some of the old property tax maps that might show some of that. We're obviously going to look at what's the safest, easiest way to create access and egress. And obviously we're concerned and appreciate the hardship it would create if it crossed a section of highway that would isolate the community. And if we have to consider the worst case scenario, which is to try to open up Chain of Craters Road, I can only, I guess, imagine what that commute would be just for safe, you know, simple basic needs. So we're trying to, like I said, be optimistic. Hopefully it doesn't affect the highway. Hopefully it stops, but as it gets closer and we're able to identify what areas would be affected, we'd be then strategizing or making our plans accordingly. But definitely having knowledge, you know, some people have, you know, some knowledge that we may not have of some hidden roads or pre-existing roads, we'd welcome that information. So I'll take that back to Public Works. So that some of us who have cabins, if the flow does come and take our houses, we can have enough time to move some of those cabins like they moved the little painted church. A lot of that is, again, community resources coming out to help one another. So if you're aware of someone that has that kind of resources, or if there's a contractor out there that has that kind of resources and capabilities that might be willing to offer to their community members, that's one start. And then obviously, if we move into an emergency situation, we're looking at other opportunities on what we can do to help evacuate people. But for now, again, I appreciate everybody being here so early. I mean, it's you know, not posing an imminent threat, but your being here is helping you to stay informed and maybe make some decisions about what you may need to do if you want to consider some of those kinds of tactics like moving structures that might be portable. You know, by looking at the, uh, that slide there, it seems like maybe the, uh, the lava has kind of slowed down a little bit, but uh, maybe you can touch on uh, what's happening at 2 and the output and what effect it might have on, on the floor? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so Puo, we, we flew over it this afternoon uh, to make sure that there's a lava pond inside the crater of Puo. We want to make sure that there's still lava in there uh, or not because that's ultimately what, uh, what is sourcing this flow or it's part of this, the plumbing of the flow. Um, you probably can't see it back there, but on this map there's a yellow line here for the lava tube that's feeding lava from Puo all the way down to the tip and different places along the way. And we looked into the skylights along those flows, uh, along the tube, to make sure that there's still lava in there. So there's still lava being f uh, f provided to the flow, and that's what's going through the crack, that's what's active at the surface out here and out here. Um, however, having said that, uh, well, and also the other clue 
you know, people have asked us uh, how much love is coming out, and we don't really know. It's a very difficult measurement to make. Uh, and the one sort of uh, proxy guess that we have is uh, by the amount of gas that's coming out of Puo. In past times, the more lava that's erupted out of Puo, the more gas it puts out. And in this case, when the June 27th flow started, there was an uptick of about uh, double. It, the gas doubled. And so we think that's part of why this thing rushed out so fast. Uh, it may have had more lava supplied to it for a brief time. It also was uh, channeled between two previous flows, so it remained narrow. Um, but now, you know, it doesn't seem to be that vigorous. And we talk about the vigor of a flow. It's just sort of a gut feeling looking at how much active lava there is on the surface, uh, what other features there are, how high the lava is uh, inside these little pots in, in Puo. And uh, it's clearly been kind of variable. You know, the uh, day or two ago, the, the flow stalled as it went out this way, and we thought that that might be a good sign. But then this morning, we see that it actually has continued on through that same crack or, or a similar crack, an adjacent crack. And because this flow is subsurface, we don't have any idea how big that is. It's got to be pretty big in order to, uh, you know, heat up the walls and be able to progress through this crack. But we also don't have any idea how wide the crack is how deep the lava is. I mentioned that from the temperature of the steam, we suggest that it's shallower than it was in this part, but it still doesn't give us a volume. So the, the general answer to your question is that it's certainly been variable over the last week. And I can't say that it's either weakening or strengthening. It, but I, if I had to guess between the two, I would say it's probably weakening a little bit, but that doesn't mean it's, gonna change, it's not gonna change tomorrow. It's variable right now. My concern is if Dr. Jim could please show us on the map exactly how much of the lava, the lava has uh, moved forward in the past week in the map. So 20 seconds, 20 seconds is close to a week, right? He'll go. <laughs> um, and my, so, so just this part right here, maybe, uh, maybe almost a mile. But remember, uh, over that week, it has not been a constant rate. So if we assume that we continue in that same rate of, uh, of advancement, um, worst case scenario, if everything remains as is as far as the amount of lava, the speed, and all of that, how long do you think it would take before the lava would reach the road if it remains in the current condition? That's really tough to say. You know, I just said it was a variable speed. It's a variable uh, eruption rate. Uh, worst case, um, you know, we said this was 1.6 miles from here. Um, you know, and we've, we've talked about this. It could be, and the easiest way for us to say this is weeks to months to factor in all the variables here. And it's not even all that certain that it's gonna go this way. I've been making the case that that's where the terrain is leading it. But if it should ever come up and stay up and try to fill in some of these areas, it could go to the north, could go probably, probably more to, likely to the north than the south. But um, this is just a very difficult area to work in. We can't even see all the terrain that's there, even with the best uh, type of scanners.